Okay, those of you who have been watching my channel since 2011, that's probably not very many of you, no doubt you'll recognize this, although this is not the one that I had back in 2011, but I did have one of these exact same models in the black color. This is a Samsung model SMX F50. It's the SMX F50BN model, more specifically. With HyperDIS, which stands for Digital Image Stabilization. Here's your microphone. Pretty basic camera from 2011. Um, and like I said, this is the one that I actually bought when I bought my first camcorder. Like, actual camcorder. Before that, I was using a cell phone which is probably sitting around here somewhere as well, although the battery is long since gone on that. But uh, the video quality improvement was impressive, but even then, you could get a lot better camcorders. At the time, I thought it was pretty impressive, but time on eBay making everything cheap, I can get other camcorders from this time period, such as the camera I'm using right now, and also other cameras from the same time period. I think this one's a model year older, uh, this is the DCR SR68. Uh, the DCR SX45 was the one that I was looking at, other than this. But the, the price tag was too much, I couldn't justify it. So I ended up with this one. Didn't buy an HD camera because I didn't see the need. I mean, again, it's 2011. You know, who's watching anything in high definition in 2011? Probably be unsurprised to learn that the number is higher than I think, but whatever the case may be. There's your lens, which is not much really to it. It's not the best lens in the world, but it's not the worst either. 65 times in telezoom. It actually has a working battery, which is important. I actually have a second one of these that I got in a lot of cameras. I don't know where it went. It's not in here. I think it's actually outside. But I couldn't get it to power on because it did not have a battery. And these require a good battery in order to power up. Likewise, I don't have the uh, I don't have the power supply any longer. That's long gone. That broke before the original camera broke. And it takes one of the special ones. I don't have that. But this will actually charge over USB, which is pretty nice. A lot of the cameras at the time won't. Uh, this one won't. I know that. And I think the Sony does. I think the Sony would. But uh, either way. There's your AV output. This is not a high-definition camera, so that is an AV out. I probably have the cable for that sitting around somewhere. Or maybe I hacked it up to make something else, I don't remember. But uh, it came with an SD card, which did actually have some video on it. So once I vet it, I may upload some of it. But uh, either way, I don't think there's a whole lot else I can think of to say of the camera. The shutter is busted, which seems to be a pretty common problem with these. Mine was still okay, but the rest of the camera, of course, is pretty beat up. And it fell off of a tripod. That's when it stopped working. I remember that noise. But, uh, yeah, I'm going to have to adjust some of my cameras for DST because they haven't been changed. This one in particular. But, uh, you can get an idea. Some of the different things that it can do. Of course, you could shoot non widescreen video. But it's your pretty typical set of things. C night mode. That was one of the things I really didn't like because it would tend to adjust the shutter speed at random, even in bright daylight conditions. Turn on that uh, image stabilization. It's got a fader, has wind cut mode. It's interesting that some of these options are off. I don't know. I don't remember everything having to do with this camera. The time lapse mode was pretty useful. But, uh, anyway, I think that's pretty much it. So, what we can do now. 
is we can go ahead and change cameras and start recording with this one. So I'll be right back thanks to the magic of video editing. Alright, we're now shooting video using the Samsung SMX F50. It's been a long time since I've shot a video with this kind of quality. If you can call it quality. This of course is the camera that I was using. It's 110. GZMS 110 to be more exact. And it's working. I think everything is working. I'm not sure if the date and time is actually being overlaid on the video. I suspect it isn't. I know that the JVC will do it. Uh, the JVC uh, GZE200, which is the camera that I bought to replace my original SMX F50 back in the day. But, uh, so here's a look at some of the zoom. I do have the IntelliZoom turned on, but I've got most of the other features turned off. So here's your zoom with the IntelliZoom. You see, I think I've got the image stabilizer on. I do have the image stabilizer on as far as I know, and you can see it's not really doing much. That's pretty typical of digital image stabilization. It really doesn't help too much. I mean, it works, I guess, but it's not the best. One thing I always really didn't like about this was how loud the audio was. Because, I don't know if you actually noticed, but I have a tendency to yell when I'm talking into the camera. I don't know why. I really don't understand why. That's just a psychological thing, I think. But uh, I have a tendency to yell into the camera. So it gets pretty loud. And it makes the audio do some weird things sometimes. Especially when there's background noise. Like, if I have all the fans on, that's when we start having problems with noise. But it works. That clock is wrong. I'm going to have to go through and start changing some of these because there's a lot of them that are probably incorrect. I think I pulled the battery out of that because I didn't want to change it because it's a pain in the butt. But, yeah, there's a lot of things that will have to be done in here. See, one of the other things I don't necessarily like about this camera is the, uh, the low light. It tends to make some weird patterns and the video quality is not very good. It gets very grainy. And the noisy zoom motor, which you can hear. Although all cameras have their issues with the digital, digital video grain. Let me do some quick testing with C-Night, which is turned on to automatic right now. I don't think I can adjust it while the camera is recording. No, I'm going to have to stop the recording. Sorry, I had it set to off. So here it is with it on. I don't think it's made much of a difference. Here it is at 1 over 30. Again, I don't think that made much of a difference. I think that's probably the shutter speed it was running at before. Focus doesn't really work too well on this camera. And there's one over 15. As you can see, it makes the shutter speed pretty low, but does make things a little bit brighter. I'm almost wondering if some of the darkness factor is because I have that light over there that might be screwing it up a little bit. I'm not sure. I kind of doubt it though. And we're back to off. 
We need some actual light in here. Then we do outdoor test video, but the weather is, it's not too bad now, it's just really windy, but it was raining and it's getting cold out, so I have a feeling there's probably black ice all over the place. I don't want to go out there in that mess. I've already been out there today. No thanks. Anyway. It's just like the way it used to be on this channel. This is what the videos used to look like. Can you believe that was 11 years ago? This is a 10 year old camera model. Back in 2011, things were a lot more different than they are now. I always wonder about that. Uh, old cameras seeing these new things, the kinds of things that the uh, manufacturers never thought those cameras would ever look at. You know, and it's kind of a thing. Some of them do better with LED lights than others. That's a CFL, so that's not really interesting. But I remember there being lots of issues with some things not showing up properly. Like, for example, with the automatic white balance and such. Of course, it's not too much of an issue with this camera. This one's probably new enough that it's fine. I don't have much to say other than that. I'm going to check if the image stabilizer is actually on. I thought it was, but it doesn't seem to be. If not, it's just not doing anything. Okay, it was off. I thought it was on. I guess it ignored me. It's still not doing a whole lot. So, take from it what you may. This is the maximum resolution. I mean, I even had this. Not that it matters. What use is it, really? This stupid thing. The internet's fine, there's nothing wrong with that. It's just this. I'm not the biggest fan of Wi Fi mesh devices, because they tend not to work. But, oh well. I didn't buy it, and I didn't get any input when we bought it, so I guess my opinion doesn't matter. I'm not sure who messed all this up. Yeah. One of my popular videos, is apparently, is the video of that fan. I don't even think it works anymore at all. Let's see. Try and get in the mirror so you don't have to see me. Oh, well, it kind of works. Not really. I mean, it's not doing its job, but it is spinning. Which is interesting. I'll have to oil it. So light flickered when he did that. Now this bulb has been changed once. I think it's got an LED in it now, but I don't know. Back in the day it was still running the original incandescent. You only changed it once. So we had to change once. It might be a CFL. I think it was getting a little brighter. Probably is a CFL. What a garbage light technology. What board is that? Oh, that's the, uh, that's that DG965 board that needs to go outside. Into that case that's out there. I ought to do some work on that iMac, too. Thinking about it. The video just got darker for some reason. I wonder if that's the display or if that actually happened on the video. I could pause it. And then unpause it, which is not something that you can do with modern cameras. That was another decent feature, because I could do that with my cell phone at the time. 
I don't think the Sony would do it. And I know the JVC won't. It doesn't have that functionality. But yeah. All the things that have changed, and yet all the things that have remained the same. So that's pretty much it for this video. Uh, I don't think there's anything else I can think of to demonstrate other than some outdoor video, which I'll have to get some other time when the weather is not so terrible outside. But for now, there's your look at the Samsung SMX F50 from 2011. The camera that I originally bought back in the day when it was brand new. First camcorder I ever bought was an SMX F50. Here is the same model 10 years later compared to all of the other models. Was it a stupid buy? Well, I wouldn't say it was a stupid buy. Was it a good buy? Eh, maybe not. There are certainly better cameras. If I had a choice between this and the JVC MS GZ MS110, I'd probably take the MS110 until I see the price tag, then maybe not, but because <laughs> it was the price tag that made me want to buy this in the first place. But that's pretty much it. Thank you for watching. If you have any comments, feel free to leave them down below.